The Flyers lose it in overtime against Arizona. They are now 0-6 this season in overtime. Welcome into Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Ashlyn Sullivan, Al Morganti here to break it down. A couple nights ago, we called that overtime loss deflating. <laughs> this is extra deflating, Al. It is. It's like we watched the rerun again yeah. where you control a three-on-three three and then they make one really good play to give the puck up and you end up losing a point that you probably could have had just based on territorial advantage in that three-on-three. Three. I suppose a lot of this looks on how you're looking at this team right now. For me, the fact that Frost and York played so well, mm -hmm. that's a lot to carry out of this game for me, that, that especially Frost. I mean, he just looked like a different player right. uh, in the slot. He, more strength that I've seen before in addition to that skill level. Uh, more compete than I'd seen before, so hopefully that's what you take out of this on the positive, but there's no doubt it was deflating to play like that, especially in that three-on-three three and not come out with that extra point. All right, a career night for Morgan Frost, and for that we bring in J.J. and Jonesy for the crossover, and fellas, we just call this another deflating loss, especially when you have all these statistics of offensive night, the Flyers season high on shots on goal tonight, 40 shots on goal, and yet you still come up with the loss. Deflating, I can't think of another word for it. Yeah, exasperating. I can come up with a whole bunch of them, actually. <laughs> None of them are good. It's, uh, it's, it's very frustrating because they played a really good two periods, the second and third, didn't play a great first period. And then the overtime, I think that John Tortorella has figured some things out with his two defensemen alignment, uh, although a mistake made by one of those defensemen, Rasmus just line, and did cost him in the end because he just gave the puck up, which you don't do in three on three, and they never saw it again. But, uh, yeah, when you're looking big picture at this game, it's Morgan Frost because, Jonesy, they've been waiting to see what they saw here tonight from Morgan for a while. He's over 100 games now in the NHL, but but it, as Al said, he looked like a different player. He looked like the player that we saw earlier in his career yeah, in junior. And, and really, as John Tortorella has talked to us about previously, this season is becoming about seeing what we have. And for Morgan Frost to, you know, demonstrate, you know, his full skill set in this game was a huge positive. I, as Al mentioned at the start of the pregame show, he looked strong on the puck. It wasn't just the playmaking. And then the confidence grew as the points started to accumulate. He made some fantastic plays that didn't result in goals right. in uh, in overtime and in the third period. But, you know, you, you look at a team like Arizona, you come in here, you knew it was going to be a fight. There's no doubt that uh, Arizona looks at the Flyers and sees a lot of similarities. But the Flyers want to make sure that their young guys advance like some of the guys have advanced here uh, in Arizona, like Clayton Keller, who ends up scoring you know, the third goal in overtime to win it for them. But it was definitely a disappointing loss, to say the least. I'm curious about the decision with the two defensemen on the three-on-three. -three. What the reasoning for it, is it a, a lack of trust sometimes in the forwards or the fact that you can get some offense from a guy like York? Yeah, it's about getting offense from the blue liners and possessing the puck a lot more. That had been an issue. I mean, you look at the, you know, the last two losses in overtime, the Flyers have had the puck the majority of the time. And that is something that they're looking to try to develop. That's something that has not been there in overtimes previously and was a big reason why they had lost the other games. It wasn't the reason in this game, and it wasn't the reason in the Vegas game. They did have their chances to end it. They were just unable to find a way to put it in the back of the net, but they had the puck for more time uh, of possession. And so I think they're on to something there, but you still like to see sometimes the two forwards be out there with one defenseman and try to end it. They've never been a good shootout team. No. So I think ending in an overtime is probably the best recipe, and I think that's what they're trying to find out right now. But they, they need to end it with a different result. That's, <laughs> yes. That's yeah, for sure. And, that and really, I mean, when you think about the pairs, he likes the pairs defensively a little bit better sometimes than the forward pairs that he can put out there in the overtime. That's what he was telling us, and it definitely has worked. I mean, there's no question the Flyers have had a chance to win these overtime games the last two nights, whereas they weren't even close with the earlier overtimes. They were barely getting their hands on the puck. So, uh, improvement, but just not the result. Yes, just not quite Right there. JJ and Jonesy, thank you. We will talk to you Tuesday night against the Avalanche. It's time now for our Colonial Nissan Game Changer.
Clayton Keller, a hat trick, the first career hat trick for him. Not, not the greatest, Al. No, this is not a power play. This is going to be a, a shot right through. It's a, it's a double screen. It looks like the screen down low is what really uh, takes the goalie's eyes up, but actually it's up top, number five, Richie. This is just remarkable. This is a beautiful move coming in. Like, no effort at all. It looks like so smooth, yucky, right there yucky. up top over the glove, and that's a sweet, sweet goal. And then, of course, this one here, as Jonesy mentioned, and uh, losing the losing possession down there, and then once Nines got his, you know, he got his sights on the on the glove right over the top, and he had himself a night. I I was surprised he wasn't on the ice more in the three on three uh, from what we saw earlier in the game, but it worked out for. I was for asking Arizona. a lot of questions yeah. during that overtime like, period. Please keep Nine nailed to the bench, <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't happen. All right, stay with us here on Post Game Live. Much more to come here on NBC Sports Philadelphia.